Okay. So we'll start with uh, a, a, a quick introduction of the the, the people uh, uh, the people here right now. We'll start with the students. Um, Kim is here uh, because I'd like so. So Kim, you know, is one is our facilitator on the uh, managing uh, uh, performance uh, manager as a performance coach, um, and uh, if the, I'd like some of the if if some teams could start looking into projects in in, in that area. Um, so hence I uh, I invited a few a few facilitators. Kim was able to to come and so I thought I'd also ask him to sort of introduce these areas from a consultancy perspective, like what could we do as consultants in this area? Um, and also Kim uh, could also then be a, an academic advisor. Uh, I'll explain the role of the academic advisor later on, uh, but here's an opportunity for you also to get to know uh, this area a little bit more around managing people, managing teams, and so forth. Okay, so we'll start with uh, a quick introduction from everyone and also let the rest of those attending know if you already have a team, if you're part of a team, uh, if you're not in a team and you're looking for a team. <laughs> so so we will, you know, we'll, hopefully we can do some matching also um uh, uh over uh, over uh, over the next 30, 60 minutes or so or 70 minutes or so uh, we also have for potentially or oh, i see peggy is already here uh, and our oh, vicky is also here yeah. uh, everyone video on yeah uh, so peggy and vicky are news will be joining uh this sorry trimester one 2021 um so told them about uh, the session today, so they, uh, they've also, uh, decided that good to hear about this uh, capstone project. Okay, so let's see on my, on my screen, uh, first is Monica. Hi everyone, yes, I'm just down the road from Greg in Perth. <laughs> so Monica, quick introduction about yourself and most importantly, do you already have a team? Are you looking for a team? Yes, a bit of both is the answer to the looking for a team. I know Paul, um, in his absence, was was happy to to sort of partner up along with with anyone else. So um, I know May May was we were sort of exchanging emails, but I don't think that we've like fully formed a group yet. I wasn't sure how many are in the group, so a little okay. bit of guidance on that would be great. But um, Sorry about my voice. I've got a cold. No, no problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm, um, my name's Monica. I work uh, for a pharmaceutical company designing health solutions. Um, so I work quite closely with a lot of clinical networks, um, which is great. A lot of strategy, a lot of planning, a um, lot of innovation, um, which is great. Um, so I, yeah, I live in Perth, just down the road, for, or just opposite the road pretty much from U Murdoch University. And I'm going into um, trimester two. So I'm really looking forward to that. So it's great to see some new faces. So hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. hi thank you. Thank you, Monica. So yeah, Monica's in, in the health space. Uh, and uh, a senior senior manager, yes, uh, senior executive. Yes. Uh, so that's right. Yep. Uh, lots of capabilities uh, embedded within Monica already. So good good team member. <laughs> so <laughs> Thank <Monica>. you. <laughs> Next will be uh, um, Robert Lau. Lo, Robert. Hi, I'm Robert. I'm from Malaysia. Uh, I was in the travel industry, or this while I have been in the uh, providing uh, finances because I'm from the finance sector, and I'm looking for a team. Okay, <laughs> are you part of a team already, uh, Robert? No, 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 because I, I I wasn't even sure uh, am I actually progressing to this, you know? <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. 
yeah, depending on where you are at the, in the program, uh, yeah. you you can uh, yeah you could take a little bit of time, but very important uh, that you you start building the network uh, <laughs> because you know team selection is is crucial. Uh, you have a good team, higher chances of better outcome. Uh, you know, if you if you're part of a team that has, or if you if you've known the the, the other members for a bit longer, you, you, you know, you need time to sort of if you get will to be know like and so forth. And perhaps I can also after this ask Kim to also come in and say a few words about <laughs> team form. Yeah, the, the main thing, uh, of course, is like uh, more concern of like what kind of thing uh, I should be doing, like what kind of subject how we actually okay. doing okay all right okay good I'll, i'm noting those down all right thanks uh, thanks robert next on my screen is uh, steven steven was chatting with someone until like all the <laughs> joking <laughs> go ahead steven hello testing can you hear me yes yeah, we can hear you yeah, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. The, I, I think there's two Stephen. There's a Stephen K.O. I'm not the K.O. Oh, one. sorry. Uh, Stephen Heath. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Stephen. sorry. Yeah. yeah. Because every time during lessons when there's two Stephen, then I get a little yeah. mix up with the one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hi, Greg. Nice to see you again. Yeah, just hi. before that, sorry. Can everyone turn on their videos, please? Uh, you yeah, know, this is far for the course. You all know that. Uh, Leon, Vicky, Stephen, Bruno. Uh, Everyone, videos on, please. Thanks. Go ahead, uh, Stephen. Yeah, sorry. The what would you like me to share? Uh, just, uh, uh, so basically, just a little bit about yourself and where you are in in forming a team. Do you have a team? Are you looking for team members? Uh, okay. And support? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so the, where am I? So the. Uh, I, I finished all the my modules already, and my next semester will be on uh, this project. I we already have a team since semester one, so I was recruited by uh, Jacqueline and Elvin. So in the team is uh, Jacqueline, Elvin, Ruling, and myself. We are both recruited by them like very early during the semester, and I also encourage everyone to do that uh, okay. to build the bond. I would say. So uh, in professionally, I am a, I am a quality manager in a pharmaceutical plant. Uh, but because of uh, the, the good the education that my dog actually gave me, uh, I, I managed to actually uh, move up the career ladder. So I'm actually moving to China next year to wow, take up a quality, yeah, to take up a quality director position. Fantastic. Congratulations. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Greg. Okay, so so Stephen, you you already uh, have a team, and and I, I think you guys have been working at every opportunity that you you could uh, when possible. So yeah, that's a good strategy. You get to know uh, members and develop a, a rhythm, uh, and perhaps even build things over the other units towards something that you want to do. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, Next on my screen is, is Peggy. Hi, everyone. <laughs> my name is Peggy. I'm from Hong Kong. Um, and actually, um, I just finished my, um, uh, my undergraduate. So I start the postgraduate in Red Ocean. And I just had my interview this morning <laughs> with uh, Professor Gray. So uh, I'm happy to join uh, guys, uh, you guys uh, tonight. And um, uh, actually, I own a free store by myself. So I'm looking forward to build my business to be a global company. So that's why I take this subject. Uh, and this afternoon, I already team up with Vicky. So uh, we need an other one or two teammates to join our team. Yeah. OK. Thanks, uh, thanks, Peggy. Yeah, so Peggy has a, uh, uh, she, yeah, she has two or three, she runs a company that has two or three locations and she's trying to see how to 
to navigate the, the challenges and also to expand the business. So uh, I thought should be a fantastic addition to this program, uh, uh, given the challenges. And Peggy, just to confirm, you're based in Hong Kong, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The epicenter of many things that are happening. <laughs> so, great, great uh, test study there. Um, so welcome, Peggy. Uh, so, so Peggy and 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 uh, Vicky are already teammates. Huh? Uh, yes. So maybe Vicky, uh, you can go next. Hi everyone, I'm Vicky. I'm still in my uh, little cubicle. <laughs> I'm based in uh, Macau, and I'm a senior manager uh, who's working in the Galaxy Entertainment Group, which is one of the gaming operator in Macau. And um, I'm working in the HR department, the training and development functions. Um, it is um, <clears throat> quite excited that uh, I, I, I could finally started the uh, executive master degree of the leadership strategy and innovations. And yeah, I'm looking forward to work with uh, people from uh, everywhere. So we are looking for like my, myself and Peggy is looking for another one or two great partners to work together. <laughs> For the capstone projects, yes. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> okay, thank you, Vicky. Yeah, so so Vicky's team has already two, Vicky and Peggy, and also the rule of thumb is uh, minimum three, maximum four, uh, because a key part of of the capstone project is learning to work in a team, and I'll I'll come to that uh, in the. Uh, um, in the in this in the project, I'll, I'll explain shortly. Um, okay, so so after Vicky, we we have uh, Alex. Alex, if you could share a bit. Yeah, hello. So I'm I'm, I'm having some internet problems with okay. lots of rain and storms at the moment. Um, I'm Alex. I'm from um, New South, rural New South Wales um, in Australia. Um, I've taken a bit of time to do um, the executive masters. I had a bit of a break and um, I've just got the innovation subjects to go. Um, and I am very happy to see Kim here because I did, I did do the leadership in 2018, the leadership modules and manager as a performance coach. I would say it has been my favourite um, oh. unit so far. Good, excellent. Keep saying that, everyone. So, I, I'm, yeah. So I'm, ve I'm very interested, and I'm um, come from the public sector. So I've had 20 years in the New South Wales government in justice, and I work as the, a manager, organisational development oh. in a local council in rural New South Wales. Um, so I'm very interested in all the leadership um, aspects of it. And whilst the the course has been challenging in some ways because it's not always so relevant to the public sector. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. I'm glad to always uh, have you uh, and uh, admire your persistence. Uh, keep at it. All right. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right. Can we then go to, to Leon? Hi, Greg. Nice to see you again. Hi, Leon. Yep. Uh, Leon from Singapore. Uh, yeah, I'm here, uh, Singapore running two business. And uh, glad to see you guys again. And I really have my teammate, uh, which is uh, Jenny just now. Actually, she's online, but I think there's a bad connection and she dropped off. She's trying to connect again. Uh, Cindy, uh, she cannot attend tonight. And uh, the other uh, lady is JY. So we really have our team. Okay. All right. So your team is uh, already set, huh? Okay. Uh, yep. Great. Did Did you start? Did like when did you start forming your team? Uh, we actually started. I think during the first sem first semester because uh, we are actually from the same batch. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. That's good. A lot of that's good forward planning. <laughs> okay. Great. And then um, May. Hi, this is May. I'm sorry, I'm in a in someone's home, but uh, thanks for reading the call. So I'm in the IT field, um, IT technology for the last twenty years in healthcare and logistics supply chain. Uh, I think Greg, you know, I just finished the first semester, 
uh, I enjoyed myself the last three months. I think uh, the, the learnings, the teamwork, the project people are great. Uh, back to the point of teaming, I think, uh, yes, uh, since you talk about teaming, uh, myself, Monica and Paul, we have been talking about forming a team, but nothing official at this point. Just okay. actually, so we have been talking. Yeah. All right, great, great. Yeah. Uh, it's a oh, process. By the way, I'm in Singapore. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's a process. Uh, and, and the team can be formed across borders, and that's something that we actually encourage. Uh, so Monica is in Perth. May and Paul are in Singapore. We encourage diversity, uh, both gender, ethnicity, profession, uh, industry-based. So uh, it, it builds, was, yeah. That was uh, part of our thinking as well, Greg, is that we're sort of so diverse in our, in our ways of working and, um, and that, so that's sort of why we thought make a good fit. Yeah, yeah, and, and this is sort of core to the to the unit. Um, so when we when we researched this program, uh, designing the program, uh, one of the things that came out strongly from from our industry focus group was, uh, um, yep, we we there are many students with advanced management programs, you know, MBAs, uh, masters in science, in management, and so forth. But when we asked them to to deliver on something they struggle or they, or they can't hit the ground running. And core to this is working in teams. Um, so again, and, and Kim will tell you this, the soft skills is, is you know, it's, core, it's so important, uh, but it's lacking. Uh, and then this is amplified uh, by working across boundaries or, or territories. So how do you work with people in, in different geographical locations? Uh, and then further amplified by having to work using technology. Yeah. Um, so when you're not in the, in the same physical space. So there are many companies, multinationals that can fly people in for, for important meetings. But what if you can't? Uh, now, when we did this research, we didn't think of COVID and all, but we were just so we research like uh, you know, increasingly people were using technology to 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 complete work. You know the supply chains is so uh, it's across many boundaries. Uh, so how do people work? Uh, but you know, lo and behold, COVID nineteen working using technology has become default. And you know, just today I you know work with my own director. We actually agreed on something, <laughs> but we weren't sure who was going to do it. So I interpreted that he would do it, she interpreted that I would do it. So, you know, so, so how do you learn to work using technology? Right? Even when you've documented stuff, how do you do it? Uh, and these were things that came out from our focus group with uh, uh, industry, our industry focus group that can you demonstrate to me that your students can actually work in teams across boundaries, uh, across jurisdictions, and using technology? Can you, and can you get this evaluated by my peers? <laughs> uh, so this is why the, the Capstone Consulting is actually a real project. And the industry, so that your client must put down in writing, yeah, we are happy with the with this team uh, and so forth. So this this is the background to this unit. Good. Okay. So cool. May, thank you. Uh, Harshi. Hi everyone. So I am Harshi, working for an insurance company as a recruiter, recruitment manager, looking after all of the sea level hiring across Asia Pacific, covering about ten countries. Um, quite fun stuff. Um, and I am looking for a team. I am not part of a team. Um, wasn't too sure, like, you know, at, uh, probably my, my mistake, but I was, I'm actually not part of a team. So looking for a few teammates to get together and start kicking off the project. Uh, and I'm currently in Hong Kong, but we'll be moving to Australia probably sometime next year. That's the plan. Okay. <laughs> Come to Perth. Come to Perth. <laughs> probably Sydney or Melbourne, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I love that word, though. <laughs> so Alex is in Sydney and Kim is in Melbourne. Yeah. So it, yeah. it, it, 
meet friends there certainly um, definitely so yeah harshi thanks um yeah so is steven co here uh steven co not here okay steven co is not here um windy would you like to go windy yeah oh yes no, i'm sorry <laughs> Uh, hi Josh. Hi everyone. I'm I'm Wendy from Myanmar. Who is uh currently stay doing my uh, my uh in in my office. So I'm I'm I still don't have my my teammate. Also, I'm looking for a team who 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 is interested in Myanmar and who would like to join. Uh, I I will welcome to and I I'm willing to help help and support all the team and working together. Okay. A bit about yourself, Windy, your, your background, yeah. Actually working in the, uh, the broadcasting uh, industry who is uh, uh, the press and the DDH provider, uh, provider in Myanmar. So we just know as a Skynet. So I'm one, one of the uh, deputy chief engineer in the broadcasting in, in my company. And I, I have uh, run my private company also. And so... <laughs> Sort of like uh, starting starting up, and I, I was really uh, enjoying uh, this this courses, and then this was really helpful to, for for me also. Okay, so you're very busy. You have a full time job in a in a multimedia uh, in a sort of tech te telecommunication company, right? Uh, sort of like uh, broadcasting, uh, especially for the media. Uh, was, uh, it's like a media entertainment industry, which is like in, in Singapore, it's like a media crop or something. Media like. crop, okay, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And then you also have your own company. Yes, uh, which uh, <laughs> <laughs> running the, the video render service and the media services in Myanmar. Okay, well, and based in Yangon? Yes, yeah, based in Yangon, yeah. yeah. Mostly okay. I work with the people from the Singapore. Okay, all right, cool. Thanks, uh, thanks, Windy. Um, yeah, I'm looking for the team, yeah. Thanks, Josh. We're looking for a team, okay, cool. Stephen Ko is missing, and I think Lu Ling, I've not called on Lu Ling yet. Yeah, hi, Greg and all. I'm Lu Ling from Singapore. Um, I finished all my three semesters, and I've teamed up with Stephen, uh, Jacqueline, and Alvin. Uh, I'm working as a lab manager for a medical device company. So, yeah, that's me. And I'm happy that I finished the three semesters. <laughs> uh, and I feel powerful wow. <laughs> than my whole self. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Awesome. So, so you all have your team uh, uh, all, all, all set up. Um, yeah, since think, first semester. Yeah, and you've been working... Uh, with Alvin, Jackie, and Stephen He and Stephen, you've been yeah. You guys have been in, in several projects in the other uh, several team work, team assignments yeah. in the other units. Okay, well done. Okay, oh, we we have Jenny now. Uh, Jenny, who just came in. Jenny, we were just doing a quick introduction, <laughs> and uh, sort of where you are as. Uh, do you have a team, or you're looking for members and so forth? Hey, hi everyone, I'm Jenny. I'm from the IT industry, working in a pharmaceutical company. Um, yes, I have a team. Uh, I have a teammate here, uh, Leon. I don't, I don't see Leon here. Oh, there, there you are, Leon. Yeah, and uh, two more. So there are four of us. Um, and today we would like to hear more about how we can proceed with the Capstone project. Okay, cool, cool, great. Uh, so. So most of you have a team or, or in the process of forming a team. A couple of you looking for a team uh, or one or two more members to complete the team. All right, great. Now we're also fortunate uh, we have uh, Kim and Bruno. Now Kim and Bruno, I invited, I invited a few academic advisors, some who have already been academic advisors some who I would like to be academic advisors. So Kim and Bruno are, are two of those who I would like to be academic advisors because they're really very good at uh, sort of guiding uh, students. Now, I know Kim may need to leave. So uh, can I just ask 
Kim and Bruno to introduce themselves. And I will then explain the role of the academic advisors so that if they need to leave, they can leave. And you can also ask questions, which as I answer, they can understand more about the role of the academic advisor. So can I start with Kim first? Hi everybody, and I've noticed I've got quite a few friends on here that did the performance unit last, uh, well this year actually. Um, so it's good to see some uh, people back and some friendly faces. So um, as Greg would know, I've been teaching on this program since it started, I think. So how long is that, about four this years? The fourth year, yeah, we're in, yeah. The, oh, next year will be the, the fourth year, yeah. Oh, yeah. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, no, ne next year will be the fifth year. Yeah. Crikey, time flies, doesn't it, when you're enjoying yourself? So um, so I run the first, for those that don't know me, I run the first unit um, in the program, which is the Managing Performance and Coach. So that sets everyone up uh, for the remainder of the units following it. It's really focused on, um, and I don't want to bore the people that's done the unit, but, um, you know, it's really focused on understanding self and developing managerial skills um leading into leadership so a lot of that's around self-awareness and getting lots of feedback including a 360 and looking at all the elements of managing in a complex environment and world that we've just been experiencing even more so in the past um what nine months now um so um so for me it's good that it's a start off for the program because it really then sets you up then in terms of, you know, you know who you are as a leader and the impact you're having on others in the workplace, which will be all of those skills will be really useful uh, in the capstone, um, particularly um, working in your teams, because sounds like some of you have been working together for a while. I noticed some of the groups are pretty familiar. Some of those groups were in the coaching groups as well. So, um, so a lot of that will be understanding how you work with each other and what strengths each you all bring to the to the project. And uh, we know that projects like these can be quite challenging uh, if you don't get those relationships worked out and understand, you know, because no one's perfect understanding who's got strengths in particular areas and, uh, and then understanding that and using those to pull together as a really cohesive team. So um, for those that don't know me, I've had lots of experience in HR. That's my main area and uh, had a lot of senior executive leadership experience, particularly in the public sector. And I've also worked in the private sector. So heading up HR functions and doing a lot around leadership development. And I've got my own consulting practice as well, where I'm still working with industry. But I uh, love teaching and love working at Murdoch. So. That's enough about me, I think. <laughs> no, thank you, Kim. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Kim has been uh, with us for a long time, uh, both in this project and uh, Kim, uh, sorry, in this program, and Kim also teaches on another, uh, we have a, a graduate certificate uh, for the public sector for managers. Uh, so yes, so thanks, Kim. Can I also now invite Bruno, uh, to share a little bit about himself and sort of the areas that he could put uh, his expert in where he can be an academic advisor should you choose a project in that area. Over to you, Bruno. Hi, Greg. Hi, everyone. Uh, yes, indeed, on my side as well, I recognize a, a few faces. Uh, some of them, uh, I'm still uh, correcting their their assignments. In fact, so I'm sure they are excited about that. Um, yeah, so I mean, uh, I've been in uh, consulting uh, for quite some time. Um, so I launched my own consulting firm, in fact, one year and a half ago. But before that, I was in uh, strategy and business development roles for uh, a few companies in uh, in the health tech space. A company like Philips, for example, where I was in a strategy function for four years. Um, and then uh, I was also in uh, in Samsung for uh, in in Korea in the headquarters doing strategy for the the companies of the group uh, for four years as well, doing uh, doing work for uh, mobile for LCDs for a number of, of businesses of the group. Uh, what I bring to the table, in fact, uh, I did work with a number of you on uh, value creation, 
uh, last year, I mean, this year, I'm, I'm, I'm losing time actually. Uh, 2020 was a odd year, as you know. Uh, but I did work as well on the immersion program for Singapore last year, uh, and also this year as well. Uh, I'm, I'm particularly interested in the space of, uh, of consulting in, in running projects, trying to really uh, decomplexify something that uh, seems very, uh, very difficult at first and, and trying to make it a lot more practical, tangible uh, using a methodology. And uh, I, will be, uh, I will be most likely um, working with Santosh which uh, who has been uh, very active in the last um, 12 months or so, and I think a, a number of you have uh, worked with him. And uh, he's also particularly interested in uh, the um, human aspect of, uh, of management, uh, very much on the HR side, whereas I'm, I'm more coming from the, the consulting perspective. So typically um, what um, what he brings, his expertise, is more on the, let's say, the public sector, because he has worked extensively for um, EDB in Singapore, so the Economic Development Board. Uh, and he has also an interesting background because he worked on the uh, startup, in the startup world. So he has done quite a lot in that domain. Uh, he's actually working now for, the, for a startup in Singapore. On my side, uh, my expertise in terms of fields will be the private sector. And um, for the past eight years, I've worked extensively with, uh, with startups as well and large organizations. So uh, all related to the space of health and wellness. So if you have an interest in this domain, uh, that's my, um, my area of expertise. And I've got uh, a particular interest, especially at the moment, in um, in digital health. So I think uh, if you're looking at the world of healthcare at the moment, I strongly believe in that uh, particular area. I think there is a lot of, uh, of value in digital health, especially when it comes to expanding the access of care to very uh, extensive population uh, that typically do not have access to care. And I've done a number of projects uh, for emerging markets in Myanmar, actually, uh, Philippines, uh, Indonesia, and now India, to really uh, democratize access to care using digital health as a vehicle, in fact, to, uh, to help people getting access. That's in a nutshell what I wanted to say tonight. So I'm uh, glad to uh, see you all and hope to see very, all of you soon, uh, I guess, in a couple of months from now. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Bruno and uh, uh, Kim. So what I'll do now is, uh, so you can see the, the, sh the shared screen. Uh, you can see my, the PowerPoint, yeah, everyone? Yeah. Okay, so what I'll do is, um, I'll, so the team selection, plan selection, project selection, I'll, I'll skip that and I'll go st uh, straight to the role of academic advisor via uh, this introduction. So in essence, this capstone consulting project is to test the student's ability to work in a team to solve a real organizational challenge with the usual constraints that you will face in an organization. Time being uh, a primary uh, constraint, uh, financial resources, data, knowledge. Okay, so this, this is part of the cost. Uh, none of us have unlimited budget, unlimited time, unlimited data. It's always a constraint. So can you solve a constraint? Uh, can you solve an organizational challenge through a team with these usual constraints? Teams bring to bear the knowledge that they gain, knowledge gaining through the program, sorry, knowledge gained through the program, the EM, but is complemented by your existing knowledge to solve a real organizational challenge. This existing knowledge is very important and I'll come to that in a minute. Third point, very, 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 very important. Team work independently. Okay, this is a self-directed project. 
the academic advisor's role is limited and it's limited to four hours is to advise to limited to advising primarily in the area of scoping the project identifying the not telling the student what the project should be but to help scope the project identify what the key question is and therefore what is the key deliverable and helping the team ensure that the research approach is not wrong, okay? They just advise, they don't tell the team how to do it, okay? The team has to develop it and show it to the academic advisor. Uh, you can certainly discuss with the academic advisor, they might give you uh, ideas on where to look for, but it is not their duty to, tell, to help you develop the research approach, the research question in the project. It is your duty. So if you take, if you say the project is 100%, 95% is your work. 5% is the academic advisor's work. Okay, so I know most advisors have gone more than four hours. Uh, you know, I, I do not know who an, an academic advisor who has said, no, it's four hours. That's it. Um, but their role is just to ensure you're not making any fundamental errors. Okay, so the key here, which comes back to existing knowledge is, if, if you are an expert in a, a particular area, 90% of, of sort of the issue is already solved. So you can go into, let's say you're an expert, let's say Monica is an expert in, in the health sector. She can look at any company, she'll probably be able to figure out 80 or 90% of the issue because she, she's an expert in that area. And then collectively put the efforts, the next three to 600 hours to solve, to come up with a real solution. Okay, and then the academic advisor is there who seen who's seen it in a broader space, let's say Bruno, who has seen it in a, in a, in a larger context, he said, yeah, have you tried this? Oh, this is very good. You're on the right track. Okay, have you looked, have you identified the research, the question that you, you want to answer? Okay, that's all the, the academic advisors role. Okay, so how you use the four hours is up to you uh, and uh, Melanie will come in a short while. So some of you may say, okay, we want the four hours to be, or three hours to be used more about getting the research approach right. Because once we get the research approach right, we are fine. Another group may say, actually, we know how to do the research. We want the academic advisor to, to yes, validate the research, but actually then look at our pre pre preliminary research report and give us their view, uh, his or her view on those, those reports to make sure you know, we've, we've nailed it down. So how you use the academic advisor, it's up to the team, but we recommend that the academic advisor helps with scoping the project. I would, so so there, there are three, uh, three, four parties. There's the team, that's you guys. There's the client, which you need to find and who you work with to find to come up with the research question or the, the, the organizational challenge. The academic advisor who advises you on the project and the unit coordinator, which is me, which sort of manages the administrative aspects, but who will also play a key role in scoping the project at a high level. Is this primarily, is this something that your team can do in three months, in eight to 10 weeks in essence, because you have to finish it in one trimester, no extension, okay? That, okay, some, that could be something terrible, like for example, Hong Kong, during the riots, we had a team, couldn't, couldn't, meet, couldn't meet the client, couldn't do anything. 
Okay, those are extenuating circumstances. But if you've not managed the project well, too bad. Uh, you can extend, but you'll have to pay. Uh, you'll have to pay it again um, for the, to, to, re, to, to extend it. So the process that I take is I don't allow you to enroll until I'm sufficiently confident uh, I'll, I'll come to that. But are, are there any questions about the academic advisors role? And also Bruno and Kim, feel free to ask questions also uh, so that uh, I'm, I'm sure the questions you ask, they will also be interested in. So great, uh, this is me just checking. Um, yeah. I mean, how do we um, do we get to pick our advisor or it's allocated to us? So good, good, very good question. So you have a choice. Uh, you know, most of the, like for those who have gone through the program, you know, almost all, no, you know all the uh, facilitators. So, so you can choose. What I will be looking for is the match. Um, now the academic advisors don't have to be really an expert in that area. It's good if they're an expert, but they are more about is your research framework for a consultancy project correct? So that's generic. So actually Bruno can advise on any project because all he will be looking at is, have you got the research question right? Do you have specific deliverables that you have agreed with the client? That means we are clear, the client is clear what he wants to deliver, you are clear what needs to be delivered. And you have a, a research approach that can answer. This is business research. This is not a sort of doctoral or master's. You will need referencing and so forth, but it's not, you know, your literature review is not expensive. You first identify the question, the deliverable, then you look for sort of best practices around that. So that would be your literature uh, review. You, of course, you need to situate the business challenge between, is it a leadership question? That means managing teams, okay? Or managing leadership. Uh, is it about innovation, new business, uh, new business processes, new services, new products, new markets? Okay, how do we innovate? Or a strategy? Okay, what strategy do we take? Now, it also could be interdisciplinary uh, in the sense that it's a bit of leadership, a bit of strategy. Okay, but you will need to scope it to have clear points of departure. What exactly are we talking about? So that's where the academic advisor's primary role is. Have you got the research questions? What is this business challenge? exactly asking for what is the deliverable and can you deliver it within three months do you have the capability does your team have the capability because the last thing the business wants to do is you spending 90 percent of your time understanding the problem which they already know and then 10 percent of your time trying to find the solution no they want you to spend 90 percent of your time focusing on the solutions, okay? So the academic advisor will help you to, to frame that and find the process. So you may to your question, you can, uh, your team can recommend uh, an academic advisor, it's been done before, uh, no problem. And of course, it also relies on the academic advisor if they have the time to, to allocate whether they want to work with your team. <laughs> Say, ah, uh, may again, uh, no, don't want to laugh. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so, so both parties have to agree, but certainly you can, you can recommend. Certainly you can recommend. So good question. Other questions? From, from anyone? Uh, uh, even Bruno and, and Kim. Yeah, Greg, maybe just a question, just to, to clarify that. But, uh, so the question obviously comes from the, the client, uh, but in some instances, uh, or you, you at times, you may have to rephrase the question or, or to guide the client towards another question that might be even more critical to the business. Uh, 
Yes. Is that something that can be done? Yes. So the question can come from both sides. Uh, so you can identify a client uh, who then tells you, look, or he chats with you. So yeah, you need a relationship going in the first instance. Uh, your client, you must have contacts with the client at a very senior level because they need to agree to actually allocate someone to talk to you. They don't have to pay anything, but they have to allocate data information and that is critical. So you need to be speaking to someone at a fairly senior level. Now what the question is, yeah, it can come two ways. So one is the client may say, uh, uh, this is something that I've been wanting to address. It cannot be something that is critical um, to the business. Uh, that puts too much pressure uh, on the team. But it's something that they have been thinking about. And they, if there is some one who, or a group that can solve it, fantastic. So that's the kind of uh, question that you have. And you can, you can uh, recommend. So there was one project uh, where the student wanted a leadership framework for the organization uh, because he wanted to be promoted, uh, but they were not recognizing his capabilities. And they had very vague uh, definition of what leadership capability is. So he said, <laughs> I will do this project uh, for my organization. Okay, so that's something that the student led which the organization agreed. Okay. So there are other instances where the organization says, I want this to be solved. Okay, then the team says, yeah, we have the capability, we have the interest, we work on it. So yeah, it can come uh, from both sides, but it must be agreed. Okay, there, there's a project scoping document which will come where you get the client to sign off uh, and you know, then, that becomes the agreement and the basis for you to, to do the project. Okay, thanks Bruno, great question. Any, anyone else, uh, questions around for the academic advisor? Um, Greg, so we will just write to the academic advisor of our choice or? No, you let me know. Way? Okay. No, so, so I'm the unit coordinator, so, so the academic advisor comes in a little bit later in the steps, which I will show. Uh, but first you have to work on the, the client. Have you, you, know, you need to find the client and at least have some broad discussions around the area that, that you're interested in. Um, uh, we, we had an interest, Bhavana's group, uh, how to promote women to senior management positions. Okay, so broad discussion. Okay, then Bhavna's team, uh, they've scoped the project gen generally. I said, okay, then this particular academic advisor could help. Would you be interested? Uh, so they said, um, no, we want someone in this area. Okay, sure. Found someone and, and he, that person became the academic advisor. So yeah, so contact me, the unit coordinator, and then I will coordinate that. Okay, good, good administrative question. Any, any other, uh, and again, you can also, so for, for example, now you know what Kim does, what Bruno does. So you, uh, through, um, what do you call it? Offline, you can, hey, Bruno, uh, very interested in, in some of the things you were talking about. Can we have a chat? Can my team have a chat with you? Uh, so, you know, off, offline. And Bruno may say, yeah, this is, this is great. Uh, I'm interested in your, your project because it also benefits me. Uh, I'll understand more about this. So happy to be your academic advisor. That is also absolutely fine. So then you said, here's the project. We've already chatted with Bruno. Okay, great, go ahead. Or oh, similar with Kim. Kim, um, my team wants to know how we can motivate people especially working online uh, remotely. Uh, you know, we've tried several things not working. 
uh, but we like to research this. And my organization, so one of your organization is keen on this. Okay, so I have a chat with Kim. Kim is, oh yeah, I'm interested too. I have time uh, around your project timeline. Okay, fine, then let me know. Uh, all good, okay? So what we're looking for implicitly in all of this, and that's why I really like Melanie, is taking leadership. Can you take the lead? That's what, you know, this, where, this is an executive master in leadership, strategy, and innovation. Can you take the lead? So when students tell me I cannot get team, <laughs> you fail the program. <laughs> You fail the program. You need to take leadership. This is the most practical simulated experience that you will, you know, it's a test. Can you form a team? Can you be part of a team? Okay, what steps have you taken to influence people to take you onto their team? What steps have you taken to get the right academic advisor? What steps have you taken to get the right client? What step have you taken to get the right uh, research problem? It's all implicitly a demonstration of leadership capability. Okay, so that's why it's you know it's a self-directed thing. Can you put to practice all the things that you have learned, both in this program and you know you are leaders in your own right. You've come to a certain level in your organization. Can you not take it you know, one step further and demonstrate it through this, this project? Okay, so feel free to take the lead. Okay, you know, you won't get penalized for taking steps, taking action. Okay, have, I'm the unit coordinator. Anything you want, have a chat with me. I love it when you take the lead. I want to see that. Okay. Any other question for academic advisors? I know uh, Kim and even perhaps Alex is already uh, are getting getting the, the rest is more sort of informational uh, and they can watch later if, if they need, but around the academic advisors role. Uh, Great. Yep, go ahead, Bruno. One, one more question. I, I guess yeah. it might be a bit uh, of a sensitive topic, but uh, typically, you know, in a, in a project, of, of any sort, a consulting project, you've got very defined role at the beginning. You have, you, you have your project lead, you have your analyst, and engagement manager, and so on. In that particular project, people have to organize themselves to decide who is who to, to some extent. No? So is that left to the team to decide who will take the lead in a sense, who will be the analyst, who will be building the slides? Uh, how is it going to work exactly? Yep, it's, it's all driven by the team. They should have had enough experience by now to know what works. You know, every unit has one assessment that requires teamwork. Every unit. The international immersion, we take it one step further where we ask it almost teamwork throughout. So that should have given them sufficient learning experience if they haven't had any prior to this, which I don't agree because all of you have been working in teams. So, and so in this we... stage, you cannot do that. Okay. And there are groups that did not do that. And it is very clear in their research output. Okay. But this is self-directed, 95%. Can All these are implicit learning. Can you lead? Can you organize a team? Can you motivate a team? Can you cooperate? Can you collaborate? Can you, in, you know, engage everything? Uh, and it will be documented. Uh, and I'll come to that. There is a software a platform we use called Basecamp, where you need to record all your activities. Uh, there is a team chapter, and I'll I'll come to all that. There is a process where the framework is provided but it's up to you how you do it. Okay, you don't do it well? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Can I just make a comment? Yeah. Uh, and uh, this is just coming from loads of experience of in another program I'm managing groups that are doing projects like these all the time. Yeah. Um, 
the working individually, it's not a group project, but these principles apply. Uh, you know, what's come in through over the last six months is um, everyone is really time poor. Um, and when you're working with an organisation like this and, you know, you're wanting to work with them on a project, the word project uh, kind of puts organisations off. Um, you know, what they're looking for is, um, can these people help me with a real business problem? And if you can't actually um, articulate with them and get them to tell you what the business problem is, they won't provide you with the resources to work with you because it's not a priority. And the projects that have failed have been the ones where they've not sorted that out right at the beginning. So, yeah. you know, don't don't go with your pet project that you want to work on. There's no point in going to an organisation and saying, I want to work on diversity in the workplace if that's not a real business problem for that organisation because... Um, so you could spend a lot of time wasting your time early on and then the project fails because you've not got the commitment from the organization. So um, That's a, a very good point. Uh, so earlier when we were chatting about where the research question comes from, yeah. uh, I said it can come from both. Uh, but I, you know, at the end, there must be an agreement from the client that yeah. yes, this is the business challenge that you have helped me understand and I, I really want to, yeah. Without the client commitment, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going to be a waste of, of everyone's time. Uh, so a real organizational challenge, not complex, not com complex that it, it bogs you down. It shouldn't be mission critical. Uh, we, we cannot do that. But something that, yes, uh, the, the company is interested in genuinely and they're glad that you that we have a team that, that uh, can can help us solve this, this, this challenge. Yeah, so I've had quite a few projects where the business have signed off to the proposal at the beginning and the scope and then all the other priorities come in um, <laughs> and that one becomes a hassle for the organisation right. which right. not signed up to it. Yeah. Um, Do you have uh, uh, advice uh, on, on, on how to avoid that? Yeah, uh, um, it's all in the scoping. It's, yeah. all in the, um, it's all in making sure you're speaking to the right client because you may be talking to the person that doesn't make the decisions. Uh, so making sure you're with the right client and it's about helping them to articulate what the problem is because sometimes they don't know. Um, and then at the end of the day, really getting a, a real concrete agreement that they understand the problem that you're looking to solve. And as you said earlier on, what will be delivered and it's very clear. Yeah. But it's client management, you know, it's process consulting and, um, you know, the expertise are coming later, but at the beginning it's helping the client to articulate their, their problem. That's okay. the from my experience. Okay, thanks, thanks, uh, Kim. Yeah, uh, we've, so far we there was one uh, client who who struggled with uh, who yeah agreed on something and then sort of didn't allocate the uh, re required resources. So that's when you contact me, uh, okay, and I've stepped in. Uh, uh, to to remind them, and also in Mel's case, uh, and this was fantastic. Uh, and again, why uh, Mel Mel and her team, uh, Mel in particular, is just fantastic. So they they got a client, genuine client, but who then got a big project, and sort of, you know, just couldn't answer Mel and her team. Uh, Mel wrote to me, uh, said but said, I'll give them a bit more time. Uh, I have a bit of slack built in. Um, but, and then kind of gently reminded them and then they apologize, sorry, uh, this came in and then continued on. So sometimes it's genuinely something big has come. This was an IT consulting company. Uh, 
But there could also be the case where the person that you're lying in, lying with, is so busy mm. uh, that he. So that's when you need to sort of go one step above and say, "Look, uh, this is happening. Could you help?" Yeah. So, so this is all part of that. You know, in your workplace, this happens all the time. You know, mm. yeah, working with the team. So, yes, these are what I would. As I said earlier, the usual constraints. So, how would you manage this? How would you manage this? Because at the end of the day, the business is not interested whether or not you're going to fail the unit. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. You're absolutely right. Absolutely. Um, That's for us. We are interested in how you have managed <laughs> that. So, how do you convince the business that what you are doing is valuable? That's right. Yeah. So this is a leadership challenge. Okay. Uh, it's implicit. So, of course, we, we and, and uh, uh, towards the end, I'll ask for your feedback. Uh, how can we, Universe Murdoch, help you? Uh, you know, help you um, without holding your hand, but tell us uh, ways that we can help you. Uh, you know, as we said, I'm always learning. We always want to make the program better. Uh, we want a good outcome for the client. We want a good outcome for you. And when that happens, we get a good outcome. Our name is enhanced. So we are here uh, uh, to hear. So at the end, certainly I'll ask you, okay, what can we do better? How can we do better? We we'll certainly have that uh, time for that. Any more questions for the academic, about the academic advisor, around the academic advisor's role? Um, sorry, Greg, I, yeah. sorry, Greg, I have a question, but it's not regarding academic advisor, it's uh, regarding uh, our access to previous uh, uh, previous modules. Uh, because when we are doing this capsule, I believe that uh, we will have to go back. Sometimes we need to go back to look at the resources of previous modules. And I think one of the modules, like for example, sustainability, uh, I cannot get access to it anymore. So would it oh. be possible for us to get access to all these modules or would they be- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Oh, no, we, you should have access uh, <laughs> to all the curate, all the modules on curator site. If you don't, let me know. Uh, but uh, as long as you're on the program, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, ex as long as you are on the executive master's program, you should have access to all the units that you have done. Yeah, so Greg, uh, I will say that I, I do not have access to 637. Okay, we'll, no. if you can email me separately, uh, all the units that you don't have, I'll, I'll, look, I'll, I'll look into that, certainly. Mm. Okay. Okay, are we all good? All right, so. Greg, one, one last question. Uh, do, we, uh, do we charge the client in any way? No, no. Uh, so that's a good way to secure commitment based on my. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, even if it's a nominal sum, at least uh, it creates some incentive to. Uh, to okay. Um, I'll need to, from a complex, I, you, I'll need to check. I don't think universities can charge uh, because this is still an academic exercise in the first instance, we're just making it practical, uh, a real. But I will look into that. Um, in fact, there was a, also a suggestion that be, there could be spin-offs in the sense that if the clients are interested, the team could actually act as consultants uh, outside of the program. But this is an academic program. Uh, and my understanding is we cannot charge for in, work. I, I don't know how it works in Australia, to be honest, but uh, in, in Europe, yep. I know for sure that uh, Dutch universities can do projects for uh, corporations and they would charge for it. Uh, we, we did part of academic exercise. an extensive amount of money a couple of years ago for a project in Myanmar. And we had four, um, four students who came to Yangon for uh, uh, two and a half months. Uh, everything was paid for them and a substantial amount of money was given to the university. But was that 
a unit they were doing? Yeah, it was uh, it was an academic uh, exercise, oh. okay. and uh, they were rated, they were, they were graded for that as well. Okay. And, uh, and they were, I mean, the, the university was technically paid by, by Philips actually for that. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll look into that. Yeah, uh, some, yeah, you're right. Commitment is one way of generating commitment is uh, by putting money to it. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look in, into this certainly. Any more questions for academic advisors? If not, Mel is here. Mel, hello, welcome. And uh, Mel, we, we actually haven't gone past the first slide. That's, I'm not <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what I will, because we were discussing more on sort of the essence of uh, the project. Like, so yeah, we've, in a way we've discussed team, team selection. Uh, everyone, you know, said, who, who you choose is important. Uh, we've discussed client selection. Uh, make sure that you're speaking to the right organization. Uh, you're, you're speaking to the right people to, de to develop the, the right, to get the right research question. That means you know, it's not your pet project. Uh, it's something that the business wants or, or you could help the business identify what they really want. That's also a process, but most important is secure their commitment to that to the to the project. Okay, so we'll skip project documents, uh, or we'll come back to it later. Um, Mel, uh, I was just telling. Uh, Greg, you. Greg, can yes. I ask a question? Sorry. No, you. Can. Um, okay, yeah, because right now in. Yeah. <laughs> a quick one, a quick one, a quick one. Um, because in the curator now, uh, we already have all those unique guides and documents like project scope and all these forms yep. Yep. Uh, for T3 2020. Are those still applicable for usage? So they are generic, they are correct. Like there is no fundamental change. So you, you can use that. I will update uh, for T3. One twenty twenty one, uh, the unit guide, but the material in there is uh, is correct, is consistent. Uh, all the documents have, have not changed uh, since it was uh, updated in May twenty twenty. Okay, so I, I, question, yeah, thanks. Question. Yeah, all right. Okay. So maybe uh, hey. another question from someone. Yes, hello, Brett. Just, just a, a simple questions because. Uh, Who is that? Huh? Vicky, Vicky. Vicky, you've got to have your video on, Vicky. All right, sure. This is compulsory, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's already explained to you in the interview. Yeah, yeah sorry. So, because, uh, for example, like myself and Peggy, we 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 are just in this program. Yep. Right. So we don't. Uh, and now uh, we haven't, I mean, myself, I'm not sure about Peggy. I haven't completed the application yet. So I don't have any access to any documents or any materials. So I guess later on, I will have all this ready, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I will. Sorry. Yeah, I will give you access, at, you and Peggy, access to curator uh, by tomorrow. Okay. okay, cool. Right. So, yeah, thank you very much. No worries. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's it. Letting you know. Cool. Mel, I was telling the, the group uh, how, how uh, what a wonderful leader you are. In fact, uh -huh. I'll, I'll add on to that by saying that I think we've had close to seven, 60 to 70 students. Uh, you are the only one who have volunteered to assist, <laughs> not only in this unit, but in the 628, uh, 638, the International Immersion. Uh, Mel is the first one to create a word, a Google Doc, such a simple thing. <laughs> she was the first one to, uh, after three years, first student to say, look, here's a way where we can all have sight of what we're all asking, uh, how to organize the days, how to organize the speakers, who's going to do assigning role. That was all Mel. <laughs> I mean, that now becomes standard, I believe. Uh, and again, here, I didn't invite her. 
she offered to say, look, I know a lot of the students here, uh, they, were, they are feeling challenged. Uh, I know that, and can I help? So <laughs> thank you, Mel, honestly. Uh, I really appreciate your time. So over okay. to you, Mel. Okay, cool. Uh, the only reason I wanted to join is because I, I have met a lot of the students that are in here, and so and I'm happy we're on the, still on the chat together, so feel free to ask questions. And because Capstone for me has only just finished, and obviously, and I've already said to Greg, I'm no honours student, so I'm not getting crazy high distinctions or anything, but it's more just real world experience, I guess, in a timely fashion. And yes, I'm an event manager by trade and therefore a control freak, which is why the Google Docs come into play. But I guess from a Capstone perspective, I just wanted to highlight, and I know it's... It is a little bit confusing when you first start it. So I just wanted to help, I guess, answer any questions that people might have and give some insights into what worked for us. So I was in a team of three. Um, we didn't individually as a team, none of us knew a company that we could approach with this consulting project as a, a free kind of offer. So the university did hook us up with a, um, <laughs> a company that none of us knew anything about, which was a learning experience in itself. Um, but it was, I guess, from a, from a team perspective that worked because none of us had any bias towards the client. Um, but the pre-work is the most important. So once you actually start the capstone project, and obviously there's the phases you work through, a lot of the work happens before you even start that. Um, and that comes into team role allocation. So that project coordinator role, which really is, and I guess, and Greg will correct me anywhere I'm wrong in this, the, the way we approached it was if the client was paying us, and I came in on the end of some of those conversations, if the client was paying us to do a project and give them a report at the end, what would they need or want? And that conversation was really important at the beginning with the client. So we actually front up had that like, what do you, you approach the university, what do you want out of this? What do you need? to make this valuable and for both of us, obviously we're doing it from an academic perspective, but you've got a business to run. What do you need at the end to actually go back to your board or to use internally to actually get some benefit out of this exercise? Cause you are going to spend a bit of time with us <laughs> over the next kind of 12 weeks, which they did. Um, so it really is at the very beginning, like the worst thing that could happen, I think at the end of the 12 weeks is you put up a report that's really academic focused and the client is like, what? Like, so what do I actually do with this? Like, it's really understand that and understand what your client wants and then work backwards to, build, to, to input the strategy, innovation and leadership learnings from all the modules um, and use all the tools and frameworks and models and theory that we've learned through that to then deliver that back to the client. So it's, it's we're consultants. So if they're paying us and that's, I guess, the part that that project coordinator becomes the client lead or the client account manager and is setting up the meetings, is making sure that the slides, um, you know, each week you've got an agenda and you know what you're talking about with the client and the client feels really comfortable that you guys know exactly what you're doing um, and that they're going to get something useful out of it. Um, and then once, and yes, there's a lot of documents. There's like A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A7. Um, a lot of them are repetitive because there's a lot of information in there that some of it's client facing, some of it's internal. But if you work through those as a team, it helps all three of you understand what you need to do, where the research parts that need to be done. Um, and we found that really helpful, I think, through the process. And then we put together very <laughs> project management. We put together a project timeline where we knew we were gonna hit things, we set up where we wanted to, and then we locked those in with the client because it's a bit different with this in respect to you set your assessment due dates and deadlines, you allocate those and let the university know. Um, but to do that, you also need to consult with your client to make sure they're available for those dates that you're setting for the university, making sure that you've got a weekly kind of work in progress um, meeting that you do each week, whether you need it or not. Um, and we did that with our client quite well. We had a Friday catch up 10 o'clock every week and then we just let him know on Wednesday each week, we don't really have anything to discuss. We're doing research. We're still waiting on this documentation. Let us know, you know, we've got questions, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really, yeah, it, it's all about the client um, as well as bringing in everything you've learned from the course to make it kind of make sense for them to show the university that 
you're using all those tools and frameworks, et cetera, but then also for the client to have something useful and meaningful and usable at the end that uh, I think in the learning guide, it's all about, yeah, data relevant, like actionable real world kind of um, recommendations at the end of the research project that you're gonna give to those um, clients. But I'm happy to take questions because I'm sure there's a lot. <laughs> And if there's anything else, Greg, you want to be to touch on? Well, uh, honestly, um, the, uh, feel, please ask Mel as many questions as you can. Uh, it's it's one of the the better managed, or if, if in my view, uh, perhaps the best camp. managed project. Basecamp is a tool everyone has to use, right? So get into that early and use it early because we had. Everyone, like I love Google Suite and I use all Google Docs, but Basecamp is, is, needs to be your collaboration tool so the uni can see what you're doing. And, you know, Greg's really good. He goes in there and gives you boosts and likes and people are looking at all your information. So that's kind of a good way to show the uni what you're doing and when and where and all of your deadlines and reminders are in there. So that's kind of the key. Now, that is, that's also very important for another reason. If there is dispute among the students, and there had been one or two groups where there were dispute among the students, then this documentation, documentation becomes critical. So who was this task assigned to? Did that individual mm -hmm. deliver on that uh, uh, aspect? Did he not? Uh, so the documentation is critical for two reasons. One is to show that you, have, you are following a particular process for the team to keep track uh, of your project management timeline. But it's also important if there is a dispute, um, everything becomes uh, critical. And all this documentation will count, I think it's about 10% plus or 10% uh, in your final report. You know, have they managed the clients? You know, after meetings are there, uh, summary of the meetings were uh, tasks allocated so the examiner will be looking at, at uh, all these uh, supplementary documents. Uh, but I also wanted to say one of the reasons why I'm happy to have Mel here is because <laughs> it was a good project. If it wasn't a good project, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't call <laughs> Mel <laughs> to share the to share views. So they managed well. So Mel, maybe I will start uh, with repeating a question that Bruno asked uh, how did you allocate the task in the group? Um, <laughs> I had Jeff and Penny. I used to work with Jeff actually back in Brisbane, Australia a long time ago. So I know him quite well. And I know he's very analytical. And the good thing is I think after you've done the leadership module and you know your learning style and your behaviours, we actually use that to help us define our strengths and weaknesses as to how we operate. Um, I naturally do obviously the project management and the, the um, project timeline and all the admin stuff. So being that project coordinator kind of, I took that on pretty quickly. But then when it came to the research side of things, when we looked at our um, client and the way we were going to divide the research, um, we looked at kind of, it was a marketing type project. They were looking to expand in a different regional um, area in Australia. Um, and we were all Australian, which was helpful, even though I'm not there. <laughs> um, and when we divided that kind of um, look at the way that they were promoting themselves, there was natural, one was about product and how they were actually talking about or developing a product. And that was more Jeff. Um, and then looking at, no, place was Jeff. And then product was Penny. And then myself, I was on the marketing and promotion side of things. So it, when we started, when you have to have that initial conversation with the client and really, un, and that question around, okay, at the end of the 12 weeks, what do, are you expecting to receive? Like, what do you actually want? And then we took that initial and we used that as a bit of a, you know, it's the first discussion. We'd never met them before. Um, we knew nothing about their business. And I tell you, it took like a week and a half or two weeks for us to even understand what they did um, because they do uh, automation and robotics. And I was asking questions about, so where do the robots sit? It's not, they're not robots. They're not real robots. Um, so we asked a lot of stupid questions at the beginning with the client was super open and he was really good. Um, so I think it's understanding what the client wants at the end and then going away as a team and talking through 
Okay, so if we need to deliver this, let's look at all the steps we need to do in the phases and divide and conquer. So then that research plan was really important because then obviously we, we split it into three, went away and did our literature research, our desktop research. Um, we interviewed a lot of um, the team within this company that was quite big. Um, and the interviews were done together because all three of us had different questions for our different research parts. Um, but then the literature and desktop stuff was done individually and we'd come back and collaborate and talk. So we had internal work and in whip meetings on Mondays as a project team. And then on Fridays, it was with the client. So we had a week to kind of, we'd talk on Mondays, okay, we're going to talk to the client. I need to ask this. Let's put together all the questions we've got for him. Let's put together our slides. So we'd actually present a work in progress or a whip deck every week that we would meet with the client with the agenda and questions and this is where we're at and give them a bit of insight into what we're doing so they don't think we're just you know la, 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 doing our own crazy thing um, and then kind of present back along the way so we never got off course they knew what we were doing they helped um, we don't know what to ask but we don't know what to ask if their businesses um, we're not inside their business so it's really hard at the beginning to understand how they operate internally, their structure, their org chart, et cetera. So it, those check-ins were really good to be, you know, ask more questions and then they'd send us more information. Oh, you don't have that. We need to send you that. We need, you need to have that information. You need to know about this. They're not just going to open everything up and give us access to everything. It was like a bit of a process and they used, unfortunately, Microsoft Teams. So then we had Basecamp and Teams and some of us were on Google. So it was a bit logistically challenging um, but they were they were really great and yeah those check-ins particularly in the beginning were really important but it, yeah once we knew what they wanted then we could divide it ish but it was still very team and collaborative um, based on what we were doing thanks fantastic questions uh anyone mel it's monica yep. sorry and I, I hardly have a voice <laughs> that's why i'm typing away um, if you had to do this again, like you're sitting in our shoes about to undertake this again, would you try and find an organisation then that you know a little bit more about rather than going in blind like you did? Was, or do you think that there was benefit in not knowing? I think there's benefit. I mean, they didn't know us, we didn't know them. They did approach the university in Perth. So obviously they were trying to move into Western Australia. So they, our client approached the uni to say, hey, like we're struggling. If you've got anything, let's do it. And that's how we got in touch with them. Um, in some ways, yeah, it was challenging because all three of us were like, oh my gosh, like AI automation, this is not our world. But that actually helped, I think, with the research side of things and asking questions that it's completely an outside perspective, which is what they're looking for. And particularly for this project, they wanted to market yeah. to an industry and we were coming at it, like looking at their website going, so I don't even know what you do, like what's going on here? And that helped them, I think, gave them a really good lens or perspective from somebody not even looking for their product, trying to decipher what it was and what the benefits were to their business. So, however, in saying that, I think if there was a business that you knew had a business challenge or a problem and we, none of us did. Um, so if you did, I think that is, and I know some of the teams that just finished the capstone this year did have, um, they brought their own clients or they brought their own problem yeah. into into the mix. Um, I think there's pros and cons both ways. I mean, I think in our, our side of things, it worked quite well just because we none of us had any bias. We didn't really know. Someone didn't know more than the other. We're all learning at the same pace. I suppose it's really then unpacking what their pain points are, right, and what their absolute hurdles are and then how you adapt. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's the number one question at the beginning is like at the end of the project, what do you expect to receive from us so that you there's no misunderstandings around what they are expecting because the worst thing you could do is university going yay this is fantastic tick 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 and the client going yeah no, i'm not quite sure what this is <laughs> you need to do both <laughs> and, and one more question sorry and then i'll hand over um so the commitment from them i know bruno was talking about would be great if they can contribute financially but even if there's a resource that they dedicate to work alongside you did you have that or was that ever a thought that is a good question um our business was quite uh like they're a big they're big in the uk but in australia it's a small very lean team which their resourcing was super challenged they did have they do have marketing support from a from like an agency support which they pay separately, but they did give us access to them. So to figure out what their marketing plans and strategies were and to get her insights, 
Her insights were very similar to ours, which was interesting, but not surprising. Um, obviously, it's all about money, and they just don't have the they don't have the hours and resources and internal skills, and they don't can't afford to pay her and her team more. Um, but they gave us access to her. Um, other than that, yeah, financially, no, which was disappointing. I think one of the big things we found for our guys is they need to do some market research and actually pay to understand the market they're trying to get into um, and really kind of drive that, which is a financial implication. So we did approach some Perth-based market research companies to get quotes and provide them to the client so that it's like, hey, we can't do it. And please, I hope that they're not... Ex that was our big concern that they thought we would be doing that market research piece for them, which I think we clarified along the way, but it is what they need. Um, you can't go into a new market without actually doing that groundwork. Um, so we found some suppliers and got quotes and, and, you know, gave them that information along the way so that they had, you know, these are, it's tactics. They want to be able to like physically do something with the information we're giving them. So that was kind of where we came from, but no, they didn't. Just yeah. I think it's exciting. Yeah, thanks, Mel. Yeah. Sorry, Greg. I'll no, keep no, going. Good, uh, good question. Um, feel free. Um, here's an opportunity for someone uh, for you to ask someone who has just completed the project. Complete from the examiner has a view. Uh, the client has a view, uh, which could, and, and I'm not. I won't comment on that. But my view: this was a very well managed project. Uh, how they liaise with the, how they worked as a team, how they uh, liaise with the client uh, to produce uh, a, a product. Um, so, yeah, feel free to to, to ask Mel uh, uh, questions uh, that you. How, yes. Yeah. Go ahead, Vicky. Yes. Um, so, hey, Mel, I would like to ask some logistic questions. So you have a team of three people, right? So are you all together to meet with your client every time, like having the meeting? Um, we did, we're all virtual. So I'm in Singapore, one of my team is in Perth and one of my team is in Brisbane, our client was in Brisbane. So we used the client's preferred platform, which was Microsoft Teams, unfortunately, to meet on a weekly basis. So we had a, a pre-existing set up weekly meeting with the client. Um, we had a couple of milestones, like the initial um, discovery call to learn about them and ask questions. And then pretty much off the back of that, the next meeting we had was we rebriefed to them. This is what we heard from you. This is what we think you want to achieve from this. This is what we're going to do. And here's the timing of how it's going to work. And then we'd locked in the weekly work in progress meetings or weekly meetings with them. We had a half an hour each week locked in regardless that they kept clear for us. Um, and then we would cancel it if we didn't need it because there were times when we were in the middle of uni assessment, like getting that piece in and there was nothing really to present back to them because we were in the middle of either interviewing people or doing research. So we didn't go ahead with them, but at least they knew we didn't have to every week go, what time are you available? So it was, it was set. It was all virtual. Um, we did think at the beginning, um, Jeff, one of the team in Brisbane could have gone into their offices, but they weren't really working from an office either. They're all working from home. So it was all virtual. I see. Got it. Um, so another question is, it's about like, because you guys are the core, I mean, this master degree students, right? Even though you guys are all experienced, you know, like, like us, we, we had our job, our full-time job. And, um, so as a group of different people mixing together and so-called students, how, how could you convince your clients, like, even though they are contacting you, right? But after maybe first or two meetings, they might think, oh, forget about it. So how did you guys convince your clients saying that, hey, even though we are a mixed group, you know, we are not an official company or consultants, but we can help you. How did you guys like convince the clients to continue use their work, like having you guys to work for them? I think we were lucky because they obviously approached the university. They wanted this work done. They basically wanted free consulting. I mean, let's be okay. honest. They're like, woohoo, let's get this for free research and give us some stuff to go back to our board. I mean, happy days. So we were lucky because our client was engaged and interested. Um, presumably, whoever you get will be in a similar situation. They're getting something for nothing. And that's like, that's the bottom line. They're getting free research, free right. external opinions, free expertise. They may not use it. They may not be interested. They may not, like, it may not work for them. And we also, we were very conscious of giving them an answer that they didn't want. Um, All right. 
there's always a possibility, right, at the end, which is why I think the regular check-ins are quite handy because it helps to just clarify what track you're on. Um, okay. it, it will come down to the client. So it worked for us. Our client was open to locking in a weekly time. But at the beginning, I mean, 12 weeks is, is quite a long time. If you set up with them fortnightly check-ins and just have that as a recurring. But I found and we all found it was better to know that every week was the same time for them and us both locked in. And if we didn't need it, we didn't need it. But the time was locked in. It saved a lot of back and forth with, because we have obviously, like you just said, three professionals all working we needed to block in our calendars to make sure we could actually make the meeting with the client, yeah. which was challenging at times. So we made sure we, at the beginning, all right, so which days are best? Great. These ones? Okay. Which hours? And then we went to the client and said, look, for us, our best operating rhythm is to, we can give you Thursday between 12 and 2, your time, because obviously we had time zone, or Friday between this time and this time. And then they tell us, and then we just locked it in so that it was agreed. And we gave them options. We didn't just say, we can only do this time. We gave them options to choose from and then it was over to them to kind of let us know how they wanted to work together. Can I, I'd like to, to also come in on this. Um, so Mel uh, explained well, Vicky, that's a fantastic question. So implicit in this program or explicit and in this unit is demonstrating capability, leadership capability. So if you look at this slide, can you solve, can your team solve the problem identified by your client? Now, in, so in Mel's case, uh, so this client, uh, so I have a relationship with uh, uh, one of the principal consultants. Um, they were open to having some people from the outside look at it. Uh, I introduced before talking to Mel, uh, Jeff and Penny, I gave their, their CV, uh, a brief CV to, to uh, this princip the principal consultant and said, oh, okay, director of operations, large event management company, uh, direct, Jeff is director of strategy or head of strategy for a large mutual fund. Uh, Penny is a business development uh, manager for a large, quite a large not-for-profit. So implicit in all these in individual uh, capability of, of, of understanding markets, uh, customer need. So yeah, they said no problem. And yes, there, there was a relationship and there was a good fit. So although Penny, Jeff and uh, Mel didn't know the industry per se, they understood sort of marketing or, or strategy tactical strategies, uh, you know, what to do quickly, uh, uh, which is what they've, they've had views from different people and said, okay, let's hear from, I think mean, it's not working. They did have, they've already approached market, market research companies. Um, so, so the thing here is WA is a really small town. It's a provincial town. It's an old boys network. <laughs> Unless you can penetrate the old boys network, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> yeah. There are a few big boys who mopped up the market. Um, so they were just keen to hear uh, perhaps three Australians, what would their take be uh, on, on WA? So, so yeah, uh, that, that, so they, they've sort of already sorted things out from their side. Uh, that's why, uh, you know, the, the managing director, uh, Dan himself, met you guys, we had, we had a chat and so forth. But that's a key question. Uh, as I was mentioned at the start of the presentation, if you're struggling to understand the industry or the company, <laughs> you're gonna give grief to the, 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 the person, the, the client. Uh, because the last thing he wants is to explain to somebody things that he knows at the back of his hand. And you are there 90% of the time asking him basic questions. So if you want to go into somewhere new, fine. Make sure you do a lot of free work. You need to demonstrate that you understand the industry. 
Yeah, you're right, uh, Greg. I think we were lucky because they were actually trying to break into a new market and had no brand recognition and people didn't know what they did or who they were. Yeah. Asking the questions helped them verbalise what they're not already communicating very well. So in a lot of ways, the questions we asked were what anyone would ask if you jumped on their website and had never been introduced to them and didn't know what that was. So we were lucky. But, yeah, we did a, we did a lot of research. And obviously our academic advisor, um, Steve, has been involved in this industry a lot. He helped a lot at the beginning when we were struggling with the uh, intelligent automation and the robots and gave us some good, good direction. So he was a good fit for us as well. So, yeah, it's... So the, the key point here is it's on you to demonstrate that you are valuable to the client. Okay, it's on you. So make sure how you select the team. Not only do you get the chemistry is right, but the capability mix is right. And someone who can lead project, someone who can analyze, you know. The research question. Can you actually deliver on it? Okay. Uh, yeah, the last thing you want is a client saying, oh, this guy is too, too much work. You're not uh, actually producing what, what uh, delivering on what I want. So that, that's something that you really have to think about. And that's why I do not allow any team to be enrolled until I myself am convinced that you can actually uh, deliver on this project because it's not good for you, uh, not good for the client, not good for the university if you uh, cannot deliver and uh, cannot deliver. Okay, so but very good question, Vicky. Very good question. Make sure you, you either you can put in the time to get to know the, the issue and solve it, or you're already at least very capable in that area. And it doesn't have to be the industry. So if your team is experts in HR, okay, you can shift industry, you can choose any industry, but it's a HR issue. You know, it's a, it's a high performance team issue, or, you know, it's a managing uh, a team issue. Okay, then any industry, then I quickly understand the industry, uh, the client who in the industry, and then find solution. Okay, or you are an expert in a particular area, say you know, innovation uh, or, in, or startup, helping startups. Oh, okay, there's a client recently, Nestle approached us, want to understand the startup culture in Western Australia. Okay, here yeah, I, can, I can help you uh, solve and uh, help you understand the Western Australian startup culture in, in the food agribusiness section. So you got to be sure that you are, your team is capable of delivering it. Don't find clients, uh, sorry, a client and a research question that you cannot uh, deliver on. Don't, don't do that. Okay, so fantastic question. A a more questions, more questions. If, if, uh, okay, maybe if no question, one last question to Monica, uh, Mel. What were your biggest challenges, Mel, uh, as a team or as, uh, as, a, as you part of the team? What were the biggest challenges you faced? Be honest. Uh, <laughs> it's really hard. I think it's hard. Even, to... even if, uh, even if it's me. <laughs> Please, no, be no, honest. No, no, I think we, and same thing with where we um, we set regular kind of catch-ups with our client. We made sure we caught up with our, we set up times with our academic advisor. Um, so obviously we went through the project timeline and we put in when our assessments were going to be due and that's when we let the university know and that's when they set the deadlines. And then we worked backwards from that and made sure that we had time with our academic advisor. Um, the challenges, the biggest challenge was regardless of how you divide and conquer the research, you're going to need to collaborate because you can't research one thing and then not feed that into what other people are learning or finding or discovering. And so that was important, I think, as a team to make sure we always kind of came back together and 
I found this, this is a great article. And we used Basecamp for that. We posted a lot of things and just found this. So just got this, um, you know, lots of McKinsey papers or we found articles and we found information that didn't just relate to one part of the research we divided, but it actually, it related to everyone. So that was probably the hardest thing. It was, it's not cut and dry. You can't just slice off an area when you're working for a client collaboratively to give them a solution at the end. So that was probably the biggest challenge. Okay, thanks Mel. So any other questions uh, for Mel? I'm conscious we are coming to nine o'clock. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Every, most people have got me on WhatsApp. So if you've got questions, feel free to just ping me. Yep, yep. Mel, All right, thank you Mel. Yeah, Mel, thank you so, so much. Really good to have you here and also uh, you being open to getting uh, Good to hear from someone who's done it rather than just. Yeah. I was just saying to her how relaxed she's looking. Great. <laughs> I think I haven't got on my marks yet. Fingers crossed. I might see you guys again next year. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> oh God! All right. Thank I'll leave. you, Mel. Thanks. Thanks very much. That's it. Okay. Bye. Now, we've got fifty-one slides, <laughs> but we're not. Uh, are we. We will definitely not go through them. Um, okay, have a look. I'm gonna, I will send all of this to you. We covered most of it in some ways or other. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just go to the uh, one particular slide which is about the process. Now the research framework, when you are ready, uh, we'll have a separate, and we'll do this, I'm happy to do this team per team. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll chat about the research framework separately, uh, all right? So what I will do is uh, we will look at the... Okay, so this is how it would generally look like uh, in terms of, of timelines. So pre-project, and this is, so pre-project means you got to complete this before I allow you to uh, be enrolled, all right? Uh, unless you have completed this, uh, I will not allow you to be enrolled because my experience is when the teams have enrolled and then start this, none of them have completed in time. Uh, as Mel said, uh, the early part of uh, the project is, is the most challenging uh, and it's too risky for, for you. As I said, the university do not allow any more extensions uh, unless it is an, in an extenuating circumstance. So you need to get the team charter. Um, I'll forward all those documents. Oh, I think all the documents are in curated, but if not, uh, I will forward. Uh, project scope proposal, project research management plan, project consulting proposal presentation. Okay, then phase one. So those are drafts. I have a look. Okay, I'm happy, uh, happy with it. And you can already start engaging the client even if you're not enrolled. Okay, you should be <laughs> because you can't complete the research management plan and consulting proposal without uh, uh, engaging them. So once you've done that, we're happy, we're all agreeable, client is agreeable, uh, okay, then you are enrolled. Uh, or you can enroll into the, uh, the, uh, the unit for that trimester. And uh, by then you would have done at least 20 to 30% of the scoping and ideally you should have understood the problem. So now it's more about finding the solution to the problem. Um, so phase two is you deliver on assessment one. Assessment one is individual research. So you scope the research and then you have identified who is doing which part of the research and you will all do the preliminary research, research independently. So assessment one is an independent research that contributes to the overall research. So how you organize it, how you show the flow, the connections and 
and everything is important. Okay, you cannot, uh, you do this, you do this, you do this, and they, it doesn't integrate, you're not going to do well. Phase three, the, the final part uh, is ass ass assessment two, is the final report, it's a group work. Assessment three is the presentation to the client, it's a group work. Uh, and assessment four is a peer evaluation. So you just evaluate each other uh, individually. So that's a high level uh, view of uh, the uh, sort of the process of the, the uh, capstone consulting project. Any questions? Uh, yes, Greg, yep. I have one question. Go ahead. Okay. Um, <laughs> Ah, yeah, just one. <laughs> In one view of time. Five parts. Yeah. <laughs> you you are right. Okay, so for from the date of enrollment, let's say for example is T1 2021. Yep. Okay, so before we enroll, we have to complete the pre-project and phase one and present yep. it to, to you. Yep. Okay, um, which means by when should we approach you in order to enroll for T1 2021? Two weeks ago. No. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> okay. That's what I'm afraid. Like I have, yeah. No, joking. Um, yeah, ideally you should have, you know, like if you want to enroll in January, beginning yeah. of December, late November, you should have already approached me. Uh, but again, it, the time is, you know, it's a concept. It's also how hard you're going to work. Essentially, I need five documents I need to see the draft for five documents and I'm confident in it. What are those five documents? Um, team chapter, very easy. I mean, at one level, it's very easy, but basically there is a simple document that says, you agree among yourself how you're going to organize the team. Okay. Uh, project scope proposal, a bit more difficult. It's a one pager. But here is where you know you begin to scope. Okay, what is the and we have a process to do that. The McKinsey approach. Um, what's the situation? Are you you guys did the international immersion right? So you know the SCQA, uh, Bruno and Santosh. So the situation complication. Yeah. So it's that, but now you know in a, in a sort of a deeper way. Uh, so the, what's the project about understanding what the client wants? What's so and what so what the client research the business problem, but within that what is going to be delivered? Okay, what specifically is going to be delivered? So in Mel's case, they couldn't say what was the marketing approach to be taken, but they said, look. This is the situation, this is the complication, this is our recommendation to you, actionable, all right? So if, if this was in that project scope that this is what the client wanted, okay, you have delivered on it. So now the research approach on how you're going to deliver that, okay? And we have a, that, that's the McKinsey approach. Um, it's a hybrid, we also need a bit of academic, uh, 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 Part in that, and we'll discuss that separately. Uh, it's in the slides, but we'll discuss that separately. And then the fifth document is the project consulting proposal. So this is what you present to the client to say, this is how we're going to do it. Are you okay with it? So these are the five things that you need in draft form that I am, happy with before you can or before I will allow you to be enrolled into the unit. This is challenging unless you get this right you, you, you will struggle in you will your trimester will just go by uh, if you haven't got this uh, sorted out. And also we don't want you to be spending time asking clients basic questions. no. 
you know, you do the international immersion, you don't ask the client questions that it's already publicly available. You know, uh, that is a definite no no. You should know the industry, you should know the corporation, public, what is publicly available, you should know. Then you go and ask the clients more specific questions and help them answer, tell them the answer based on your research. That's where the focus should be. Okay, so A1 to A5 draft form, then you get into the, the enroll, and then you have three, uh, 10 to 12 weeks to finish it off. And believe me, time flies. Okay, time flies. You're working full time, your teammates are working full time, clients can be busy. To work this all out, make sure you deliver assessment one, assessment two, put everything. 12 weeks can be a challenge, just like real life. Okay, so how you manage those. So to reduce the risk of failure, A1 to A5, if you do it well, you're on stronger ground okay, to, to get through uh, the, the unit. Deliver something useful to the client, you pass the unit. The university, ah, we did a good job. <laughs> okay. Does that help, uh, Lule? Uh, yep. So, Greg, is there a drop date date that we need to get all this done in order to enroll for T1 2020, uh, 2021? So the, yeah, for every semester, the, the, the deadline is the census date. So, in every trimester, trimester there will be a census date. So, uh, okay. wait, uh, do I have yeah. the census date? Okay, for, for trimester one, the census date is 8 February. But then you run the risk. So a trimester is about 12 weeks. So census date is already four weeks into the trimester. That means you only yeah. have eight weeks to finish the yeah. trimester. So it would be a risk in my view, uh, mm. better to, to enroll into trimester yeah. two. You can, remember, you can do the research with the client even without enrolling. You can continue. The enrollment is so that, okay, now you're in the university system. You can start the project even without enrolling. Okay? That increases your risk, uh, it reduces the risk of failing or not completing in the trimester. Okay? So you can start the work. And then towards the, you know, you've done all the work. And then in trimester two, enroll, submit, pass, uh, examine, done. Uh, Greg, when does trimester two starts? Say that again. Say, uh, I didn't say that. Sorry, um, this is Harshi. When does trimester two starts? <laughs> it's on the website. Okay, cool. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm sure Tara has emailed you the dates. But uh, so trimester two starts on 10th May. 10th okay. Yeah. But yeah, get the hang of the dates. It's very important. Uh, and I'm very sure uh, Tara has sent you. Uh, if Kaplan students, I'm sure Kaplan has sent you. Uh, but in that odd event you have not received, let me know. Uh, I'll send you the, the dates. Hey, Greg. Hi, Professor Greg. This yes, is Vicky. Please. Yes. Um, from everything that Mel just shared, and also mm -hmm. whatever that you shared, I, I want to clarify about my un my understanding in terms of the overall capstone projects, right? Sure. So what I understood is, first we need to select a identify a client, and we approach the client to identify or understand in terms of the business issues or problems, right? So yep. by then we have a client, we have the issues then we basically fill in all those A1 to A5, five documents. Yes. And the results of the capstone project is all about research, having the uh, data and statistic to explain and also come up with a uh, solutions, but we don't have to implement the solutions. No, that's for the client to do. 
Okay, so yeah. what, what are we trying to do is propose, identify the issues, come up with data and support with our proposed ideas and solutions. Then we yeah. do the presentation to them. Yeah. And if they're happy with that, they, uh, yeah. they ex so, um, yeah, your presentation uh, should capture it. The client might also ask for the final report. Uh, and no, normally that's the indication that they are genuinely interested in what you have proposed. If they don't ask for the final report, it means I say thank you very much. Uh, but yeah, so example, how to increase uh, women in senior management posts in Four Seasons hotels, uh, a chain of companies. So that was just a recent project. And so they put forward a HRM process where they, you know, you can select capable women uh, into this. So now it's up to the company uh, to implement that if they are interested. Okay, but that's not your problem. That's not a problem for you. Your pro your challenge is: can you deliver something that is evidence based using state of the art uh, research theories? to provide this recommendation. Okay, got it. Uh, in terms of the focus should be not understanding. Got it. it. Yeah, now yeah. it's all clear. So, uh, I, uh, what I want to clarify more, more in terms of phase three, assessment four. Sorry, what is that again? So we'll send you a survey. Was Peggy a good team member? Oh, definitely, One, yes. <laughs> Terrible, never do anything, just All relax right. only. Okay. Five, very good. Thank you. Better than, yeah. So, uh, and it's 10, so assessment for 10%, assessment three, 10%. It's all in your unit, right? Uh, assessment two, 50%, assessment one, 30%. So the research is the stronger part, which includes project management, how you manage the project. Three is presentation. Four is peer evaluation. Thank you, thank you. Got it. Good question. So, so this is the essence. I, I will uh, uh, send you all this, uh, like how you should, how you should actually do the presentation. Uh, be one of a particular quality, particular standard. Uh, I'll put that. Uh, you can vary, but this is the baseline. There's a whole bunch of slides around the research framework, uh, which once you are ready, we will have a chat. We'll have another session on that. But at this stage, the key is, can you select a team? Can you identify a client? Can you get identify what the, the, research, the business challenge is? Specify the deliverable? Scope all of this, run it past me. If I if I said yep, and of course when you scope the research proposal, also you need the pro the research plan. Like how will I do this in the next twelve weeks or eight to ten weeks uh, at a high level? Okay, and then okay, and also by this time we will assign an academic advisor. So once you've got a client. You have a general research question. We can assign, you can tell me if you want a client. And Nicholas is here actually. There's another uh, potential academic advisor. Nick, are you here by any chance? <laughs> uh, probably. Uh, no. But so Nick, Nick is a high performance uh, system. Uh, Nick is very interesting. Uh, he is both a medical doctor and also a doctor in marketing. He was uh, the managing director of Renault in South Africa. Um, um, he is now, I understand, buying selling companies. Uh, he does a few different things and I, it's quite fortunate that uh, he's also interested in doing a bit of teaching. So, uh, and he, he uh, also has a strong consultancy uh, a background. Um, so he's also available uh, as an academic advisor. Um, so yeah, at this stage, what's most critical is get the team, 
client research question, start planning on how you are going to do the research. Any questions? Great, Anyone? oh great, Jenny yeah. here. Um, from what we see, in order for us to register, we need to submit A1 to A5, correct? Correct. And here in the slide, you're saying that for A1 and A5, we will need it to be approved by the client before submitting to you? Um, so so the that? research approach, uh, better to check with me first and the academic advisor before you go to the client. Uh, because this is all around credibility. Now, if you're very good, you know, you're like, you know, yep, this, I know exactly what I'm doing. Fine, go ahead. Uh, we are like uh, your backstopper, uh, you know, look, yep, this research approach is good. Your academic, academic advisor will say, yep, this is good. So then you can confidently go to the client. So this is that, you know, what Mel is saying, keeping in touch with the client says, here is our idea. Again, it has to be structured. <laughs> you cannot, uh, would you like this approach? No, would you like this approach? No, 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 <laughs> no. Uh, think through, get it almost 80% right. Okay, of course you want their feedback, so present. So yes, these are things that you need to get done uh, before you are allowed to, to be enrolled because Again, in my experience, this is where most teams flounder. Uh, this is the part. Once they get into the groove, then it is not not uh, not not a big issue. But this A one to A five is, is where they, they struggle the most. The three three yeah two three and 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 four uh, this is the most challenging part. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Also, uh, uh, now if you have any suggestions, you yeah, most welcome to ask. Continue to ask questions, but if you have suggestions on on what you think uh, uh, Burdock University can help you with, uh, what would you like? You know, how can we support you more without holding your hands? What can we do more? I'm just um, curious, um, Greg, because we are going to start with the client prior to the registration of the capstone, right? So I'm trying to understand then why do we need the registration after engagement of the client? Wouldn't it be like, you know, the first step is register as a project and then we start, you know, as part of project management, right? The first step is really is to initiate. So I'm just curious, why is it that it's in the middle? Okay. So this is the reason you can enroll on January 18, but if you don't complete in that trimester, you will have to pay again to enroll in the next trimester. So if you don't complete your project within that trimester, mm -hmm and you have to extend it to the next trimester, you will have to pay for that extension. So that is why I'm advising, oh, if I you see. do A1 to A5 well, mm. then the experience is you, then you can use 10 weeks to finish off the, the research. The experience with the earlier cohorts is, they start A1 after enrolling. Some took a year to finish the project. So at the beginning, the university, we were able to convince the university that uh, to an extent, the university said, because there are complications in reporting. We have to report to the regulator on who is the student, what's happening and all. It was causing massive headache, and there is a cost element to all of this. Said no more. You want to extend, can pay full fees to to and Capstone is a double unit, huh? so two units this trimester, two units next trimester. So to avoid all of this, this is the workaround that I'm suggesting. Okay. 
Mm, okay, got it. Cool. Greg, a question uh, regarding the, uh, and you may have addressed this question earlier, so I apologize for that if I didn't get it, but uh, do we need to get uh, the client to sign an NDA? Uh, yeah. We, whether we yeah. sign an NDA as well, and the advisor needs to sign it as well? Yeah. Uh, good point. So the, so the, we will ask all students to sign an NDA, so non-disclosure agreement. So basically, you cannot use this information for any purpose. It's only meant for academic reasons. So you cannot publish this. Uh, you can have some truth, truth with the agreement of the client, maybe a summary that, oh, I've done this project and so forth. Yeah, you can ask the client to write a letter for you, fine. You can share the, the report with the client, but the client cannot use it. You own the, you, the student, and the university kind of owns the project and the findings. Um, now, there are also companies which ask you to sign an NDA. Uh, uh, it's similar, but they're taking a sort of a double security to say, <laughs> make sure you do not uh, publish this information. So yeah, but good, good point, Bruno. So we, the university, will ask you to sign an NDA. Uh, and there are there have been companies who have also asked the students to sign an NDA. There's non-disclosure agreement. So no one can see this report once it's written, except the client. They cannot use that in any way. You cannot use this in any way. Good question. And any those who need to go, feel free to go. Uh, uh, and you know you can digest. I'll send all of this. You can digest it. Uh, and again, if you're part of a team, come together as a team and email me as a team. Uh, <laughs> reflect poorly if you're part of a team and three of you are asking the same question. If you you don't have a team, yeah, you met a group of people. You can start the process. Uh, I will not do anything more than this to help you form a team. As I said at the beginning, this is a leadership question. It's up to you to work this out uh, and uh, you know sort this to, to sort this out. Um, find a client, find a research question. Uh, but but if you are struggling not with teams, but we are struggling with clients, uh, uh, email me uh, and I'll, I'll see, I'm happy to, to help you. Uh, we have, yeah, we, uh, I do, the Murdoch University has a couple of organizations that we can uh, reach out to, uh, to help you uh, to find, uh, to get a client and research question. All right, yep, see you Bruno, yeah, cool. Again, happy, uh, good to see all of you. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, uh, Happy Holidays. Uh, ha happy for you to leave. Anyone who has questions, going once. <laughs> going last once. questions. Last, yeah, last well questions. Done, Vicky. Yeah. See you guys. Have a good Christmas. Uh, Monica so, started drinking already. <laughs> we we are we are talking a lot of. Uh, I'm kidding. Research, Get well right? soon, Monica. Sorry, Vicky. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So we talk. We talk a lot about research. So, are there going to be a a module or a chapter talk about research soon so, or? Yeah. So finished? once you are ready, uh, so I normally run another session about two to three hours on the research approach. So those slides are already in this uh, slide deck, uh, but we'll have another session just on research uh, approach. Great, thank you. Yeah, so, so that's one, but also um, once you get onto the program, you'll have access to university resources on, on you know, online resources on how to do research and so forth. And when you go on to Curator, there's also resources on how to do this and so forth. Yeah, so we'll, uh, there is support there. 
Thank you. Cheers. Any other question? Um, I got a question. Okay. Yes, Peggy. Um, so uh, in case we if we cannot find a right um, client we're looking for, can I use my company as an example? Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. So who will you talk to? Yourself. So you're the boss, right? Yeah, because I just in case want to have a backup plan. Yeah. Yeah. No, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so the, the risk here is, uh, what do they? Call? You are biased uh, because it, you know, it's not somebody else looking at the issue and uh, providing solution. So mm -hmm. there is there is this big risk uh, because you are both the recipient and also the client. So yes, we can work on that, but we'll need to find a mechanism where part of your influence is mm. limited in terms of setting the direct research directions. Uh, so we can discuss that uh, as if, if you're keen on your company being the client, yeah, we'll discuss mm -hmm. how we can uh, sort of mitigate the, those kind of issues. Okay. Great. Any other questions, gentlemen, ladies? Luleng, you've got four more questions to ask. No? All good? Oh. Hmm. I, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I was trying to tally all the um, templates. Yep. Uh, yeah, so I'm still looking for the research management plan. No, so the research management uh, A3 and A4 is built into uh, uh, into five. I'll, sh I'll show you. So okay, okay, yeah. So so this is the start of your project consulting proposal. So this is an example. Okay, so you start with this slide. So this is your project. So SCQA, uh, our understanding of your situation, uh, our proposed approach, uh, the team, who is the team and what are they responsible for? And then at the end, uh, the Q&A with the client. So our understanding, so this further elaborates that. So this situation challenge, and this is the research question, how we understand and what is the, the deliverable that, or the answer that you're looking for. This is the research uh, plan, okay? What is the activity? So, you know, is it desktop research uh, uh, survey? So you, you have to outline all of this. So this is, this is that research approach, okay? And that research approach comes at the end of this. Uh, we won't go in it today, but if you go through the slides, the research framework, all of that part is where it comes in here, all right? So that's A3. Uh, sort of the timeline, A4. So when are we doing what, which is put in A3, but you, that will be delivered at this time, which will feed into this, it will feed into this, it will feed into this, and so forth. So, so this breaks down even further, okay? So this is how your proposal should look like. And this is why I say, if you have done this well, doing the research, not, you can certainly complete it within uh, five, uh, eight, seven to eight weeks, or give or take 10 weeks. So nicely within a trimester. You don't have to break, you know, kill yourself doing this. But if you don't do that, you can see how detailed this is, you know, it's, it's no joke. I bet none of your research work in the nine units come as close as this. Okay, so just remember, 
This is a capstone consulting. Each one of you is supposed to spend 600 hours, two units, uh, sorry, 300 hours, two units, times by three minimum. So 300 times three, 900. So collectively, you should be spending 900 hours minimum to solve the research problem. Okay, so if you do it well, fantastic outcome. Don't plan well, you know, uh, everyone, but it's, it's no joke, okay? It's not a joke. It is a, 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 it is a tough paper, a, a tough uh, unit. But if you do this well, and that's, this is how we demonstrate to the industry, yes, these are okay, very capable people. Okay, they have, they have demonstrated that they are capable. So this is the, where the three and four comes together. Okay, Lule? Yeah. Okay, Greg, so besides those materials that we will have to use, because there's a few templates in the curator, so when we present to you, right, do you expect us to do it in a slide format that you have shown us now? So that I'll send all the documents again so that we're all like on the same page. Yeah, so yeah. team data, yeah. fill up the template, project yeah. so proposal, fill up the template, and then A5, which includes A3 and A4. Mm -hmm. okay. So that is the basic one. You, you know, you can add, maybe you're better at managing, uh, you know, the, the information, you've got better graphics, fine. But it has to answer this, the, the topics, the headings within that, uh, uh, the slide deck, uh, within the scope proposal and, and research approach and research management. So we, we are looking for certain things in the project that these templates make it clear. Okay. Hi, Greg. Your this uh, video recording and PowerPoint presentation, uh, uh, where are you going to upload to? Uh? It will be in the creator, right? Very good question. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put this all up. I'll, so I'll take down the older ones, or I'll probably add on. So, um, should I add on? I'll, I'll, I'll update, I mean, I'll remove the older ones and put up uh, this one. So it will be in the curator's site, 639. I'll put the date today's one so that you know pre precisely uh, that this re recording refers to this session. Is that all right, Leon? Oh, okay. Because our, our uh, teammate want? is not here. Yeah, because uh, if, if you can, I don't know whether Tara can actually send out a link that allow us okay. to uh, yeah view. Yeah, no worries. No. I can I can do that. So I'll send it out as an email to all of you. Yeah, and, and the link uh, that actually we can assess your PowerPoint slides and your this video okay. yep, recording. No and the other thing about this uh, NDA, uh, is it pre prepared by the school or we by have to come out our template? So the NDA is our university legal document. That means that you'll be heading the, the school heading, right? Madog University heading. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. can, thanks. Yeah, yeah no, it, it is a legal document that our legal team prepared. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it enforceable by law. So you, the students cannot use the uh, material in any way. So if you want to commercialize it, certainly you can, uh, but you cannot use the information of the client at all. You can take the ideas or the concepts and then do something with it, but not this, the project, the findings of this project. Sorry, Greg. The, you mentioned just now that this one will be uploaded to Curator. So that means yeah. we have access to Curator for the capstone? You should have. Uh, if you don't, just email me. It's a matter of just adding your name to, to the Curator site. So I'll do two things. I'll upload this video there. I'll upload the PowerPoint there, but I'll also send the slides and the Zoom link to all of you 
as an email. So you, you have both lines. Okay, and if you want to forward it on to your teammates who didn't come, you can also do that. But everyone should have access to Curator. Curator provides you also with some research training resources. What are the things you need to do to develop the skills to do this project? Okay, so Curator has more resources around the skills aspect uh, uh, than, than the slides. Okay, more questions? All good? Robert, no problem? Big problem actually. It seems like uh, the space for the team is quite limited. No, don't <laughs> worry. Everyone is actually getting a tea. And no, don't worry. Uh, do you have new? Uh, do you have more units to go? No. Oh, okay. This is my last. I I only have two, and this is the third one. So okay. end up like I know nearly no. I those one I know is already team up. It's kind of like, bummer. Okay. <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> okay. Well, what I mean, there'll be new students coming in. Uh, or. So Peggy, Vicky, uh, need, so the minimum in a team is three. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm checking with them now, but yeah, the, the thing is, yeah. do, do, we, do we actually, can, can we actually have their contact or is the list being distributed or whatever? Or even the yeah, team yeah, we can, is- We will send out, I can send out an email. We have done that in the past. So only for contacting to be, in the team, huh? cannot use yeah, the email course. for any other reason. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, oh, and and you know that the new one is coming in and they just pop up like, okay. <laughs> okay, no Very problem. Good. We will send a, a list of students uh, that is eligible for uh, 639 uh, to, to everyone. We do that twice a year uh, anyway, uh, to say okay. here are the list of students. Consolation prize. <laughs> <laughs> what if I actually can't find a team? So basically, like I will need to wait for another semester. Yeah, yeah, because it it is a requirement. This is a team. Uh, uh, this is a teamwork. Uh, mm. Yeah. So very quickly, that's a, sorry. During orientation, uh, all this was like. Quickly start thinking about capstone. Start finding your your teammates right from day one. Uh, then you you're safer. Because if you wait, yeah. Uh, yeah and I, I didn't realize the the entire team formation is 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 like kind of like this. So even even the pool of people that is you're joining the team in that particular time. I, I wouldn't even have any idea. Plus, uh, joining the program was I was kind of like popping up from the other program to to the modal program. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. at, at the end, it's kind of like, hmm, not sure, okay. not sure. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll try somehow. Yeah, that's a, yeah. There's a couple of students, uh, like Stephen Cole is looking for a team. Uh, there are a couple of students who are looking for teammates actually. Uh, who is the other one? Uh, I know there are two students who have written to me who have, uh, who is asking for teammates. Maybe I'll put the three of you together uh, uh, and, and you guys can, can, uh, can form a team. Uh, and uh, that could solve a uh, uh, challenge, sort of finding the teammates. Okay, so I'll, yeah, I'll do two things. I'll send out every year or every twice a year, we send out a list of students who are eligible. But for you, maybe for you, uh, Stephen Cole and forget the third, third, 
there is another student also from Singapore uh, who's looking for it too. So I'll, I'll put the three of you all together. And, uh, you guys okay, I guess can... it's the, the, the thing is like the, the form, the teams, the names to see like, how oh, I can really check with them to see whether they have slots or yeah. those one that is still open to team up, uh, yeah. I can try to contact them to see. So Harshi is also looking for a team, right? Um, I found one, um, oh. Greg. So fast. <laughs> Good on you. Yeah. So, but I know uh, Stephen Ko uh, has, has asked me, he emailed, uh, and there is one more student. I think for some reason, his name is checked. Um, Roy, yeah, that's it, Roy, Roy Lim. So the uh, three of you perhaps could, could form a team. Uh, and uh, at least as a start, see if you guys can work together. Yeah, sure, sure. I'll do that, yeah. Great, great, thanks. No worries. Thanks, thanks, tips. Okay, uh, any other great. questions? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah great. I just thought of one first, I just thought of one question. question. You got two more quota. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, I read the unit guide. It says that we have to uh, record all the team activity in base camp. Oh, yeah. So is it a must? Oh, of course. Yes, yes. Oh. Absolutely. So, um, if you don't, one is there are marks uh, attributed to project to teamwork. So you will lose marks there. And uh, two, if there are disputes and there is no uh, evidence, then we do not know who is right, who is wrong. Okay, so, and this has happened. One group, the work assigned to one team member, he didn't do. Uh, it depressed the mark of the final report. And, you know, then one of the, the team, one team member who said, look, I worked so hard, it's not fair. Uh, that person didn't do his work, he's getting the same mark. But lucky they had the evidence. So then the examiner, uh, deducted marks from that uh, uh, individual. So this is where, you know, team already dysfunctional. Uh, but the, on the other side, so if you look at the rubric for assessment two, you will see one of the components is how they manage the project. So if you have base camp, can you see the base camp? This is uh, Mel, Jeff and Penny's group. Are you able to see? So, so they've got yep. all the yep. documents and uh, files. Uh, they have, you know, they chat with each other. Uh, they, you know, they, they have the discussion. So, so we know, uh, so very good. They, so this was the company that they did. So they actually uh, could do some research, share. So, so we also know, yeah, this is a, a you know, group, the group is doing their job, <laughs> okay? I've had to come in where some groups like, oh, hey, what's happening? I oh, see no activity. Are you all doing your work or not? Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, we are doing this, we are doing this. So absolutely uh, uh, necessary. Okay. So we, okay, we have, thank you. We have the record of all the groups. Any other questions? No? Not. All right. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas, Thank Happy you. New Year. Yep. Catch you guys in the New Year. Feel free to email if you all have questions. Work yeah. as a group. Rob, uh, Robert, I'll, I'll send you the, connect you with the other two uh, tomorrow.
Great. Thank you very much. Okay, everyone. Good to see you all. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Yes.